My notebook is a collection of words about my work, but it's also a reflection of two people who have shaped the way that I live and work with animals. John Tanner taught me from the get-go that you have a relationship with every animal that you live with, and you take the ups and the downs, and you work through things together. And George Adamson, I originally saw Born Free when I was four, I cried buckets and I vowed to move to Africa and find Elsa. I also vowed that I would raise baby chimpanzees. He has shaped how I see animals as living beings like us on the planet that we share together, and he taught me that relationships are natural. What I've learned is that training is teaching and teaching is about giving information, and information should be inspiring to encourage good learning. Training domestic dogs is always working with two, spe two species, the person and the dog. I work with real people and real dogs, not the mythological perfect version. And the information I give as a trainer is applicable to all species. How we all learn is the same across the board, whether you're a dog, a horse, a bird, or a person, which makes life pretty cool and less mysterious. The methods I use can transfer to any species, even your own children. The only difference is what's rewarding. Training happens 24-7, 365, but there is no off button for gaining information. Our dogs are learning from us, but also the environment, so choosing the environment is important, and this is why. Once an animal learns something, it can never be unlearned. Try to unlearn your ABCs tonight. Training sometimes gets confused with the word control. Control is merely an illusion. Ask any parent of a teenager. <laughs> Training starts with trust and safety. If a dog trusts you and feels safe with you, there is an agreement, an opening. Training at its core is cooperation, not control. Working together creates team. Dogs are the thoughtful side and humans are the emotional side. The trick is to maintain balance and learn from each other. Balance in training comes from social, emotional, physical, and nutritional well-being. When these are in place, teams remain upright and steady. Behavioral science, what I study as a trainer, is not an exact science. Behavior is not static, but rather fluid and dynamic. And just like everything good, music, dogs, food, wine, and skiing, if you want to dig deeper, you become a student, you observe, you practice, and you have fun. So what's the first thing to teach your dog? It's how to play. Do not fear getting dirty because you will. Play is vital to a healthy relationship with your dog. It expresses who we really are with no armor. We need it and our dogs need it. Playing lends itself to healthy social interactions. And play has purpose too. There is more freedom of expression and less social pressure. It teaches us how to be patient and understanding while training and it allows our dogs to feel safe while making choices. Play encourages problem solving, reasoning, and working through new concepts while enjoying time together. And it turns out we should focus on this type of training because there's a place in our brain called the reticular activating system. Simply put, where your focus goes, attention flows. If you're in the market for a new red car, you'll notice that all of a sudden you see a new red car everywhere in town. Your brain will find what you're most interested in. If the focus is on barking and pushy behavior, that is all you will see and you'll see more of it. And it will negatively impact how you feel about your dog over time. So as a trainer, I always look to see what a dog is doing that I like. I watch and observe and when I see something, anything, a deep breath, softening of the eyes, picking up a toy, a twirl, a play bow, maybe prancing or laying down. I always acknowledge this. I always, I always, always acknowledge this because I've met more diamonds in the rough this way. And it's just brilliance waiting to happen. Touching can communicate emotions to our dogs more accurately than words. Touch is the first language we primates learn, and touching influences our dog's behavior. It has the potential to heal or break down, nurture or abuse, guide or mislead. My hands are my tools for work. They're for safety and comfort. Training, training is, understand, is, is you always have to understand the use of space. And the best way to describe this is Costco on a busy Saturday afternoon. You learn that those, there are those that give it, those that take it, 
those that need more of it, and those that get so close they feel like they're going to crawl inside your skin. Dogs are masters at the use of space, and they can guide the movement of others by using, giving, or holding space. They can also in be influenced by others' use of space. Becoming fluent with these nuances and subtleties takes thousands of hours of practice and observation, but you start to feel the negotiation of movement. Now, training is play, and play is training, and just because it's fun does not mean it's permissive. On the contrary. Professional handlers and dog sport competitors take their goals seriously. They have a plan, they train with play, and they enjoy the ride together. Now, I don't give guarantees, and I don't have a crystal ball, but it wouldn't be fair if I didn't share an insider's training secret with you all tonight. And I learned this years ago when I was competing, and it still holds true today. If you want to build more focus with your dog, you need to be more interesting than dirt. <laughs> In everything that I do, it is hearing a dog's breath and the sound of paws moving across the earth that affect me the most. It is a deep reminder to be respectful. And as I was preparing for tonight, the great country of France is now passing a law that dogs will legally be described and move from movable objects to living beings with rights. As a trainer, I have learned that our dogs have ideas, thoughts, and dreams all on their own, independent of us. And to quote Dr. Roger Fouts, Plato and Socrates had it all wrong. Man is not the center of the universe, but merely a part of it. Thank you.